Mustard Tavern Keepers, History of the Old World. Good to see you all again, young neophytes. I trust your lesson with Cedric this afternoon was as stimulating as ever. Excellent. Cedric has also been good enough to donate some of his special alchemically fortified cider for tonight's impromptu candlelit supper with the adventurer Heinrich Lewin. Not only does it make the drinker more talkative, it also keeps them more truthful. The knight returned from his sojourn in the Porto district before sunset. So, he is currently in his room. And don't worry, he is alone. I think he managed to scratch that particular itch down at the docks. Let's go. It is I, the Master Tavern Keeper, my lord. I brought you some very special drinks for your edification, and I am accompanied by the surviving young apprentices of the Engineering Guild. Ah, oh, yeah, what excellent timing. Just a moment whilst I put on some clothes. Welcome, welcome. So many fresh faces. You are most welcome. Please, come in. Thank you, my lord. Oh, and what a delightful dressing gown you're wearing. Ah, this, it is nothing. I found it in a pawn shop down by the docks. Ah, I see. Uh, anyway, if you remember, we're here to talk about your grandfather's voyage to Lustria with our very own Tylean explorer, Marco Colombo. Ah, yeah, yeah. As per our agreement, I have brought some of the finest beverages to ever come out of the sunken island of Erin, that fabled emerald isle that once lay off the coast of Albion. Hopefully, this will compensate you for your time with us. Oh, you spoil me, Master Tavern Keeper. I gratefully accept. Please, find yourself some space amongst the cushions, and I will gladly begin. Here, let me pour you a nice large glass to refresh your palate and loosen your larynx, oh noble knight. Thank you, thank you. Cheers und zum wohl. Ulvik's beard, what the f- <coughs> oh, It has quite the kick. <clears throat> no wonder the island disappeared. It was probably dissolved by this poison. But um, it is not unmitigated, God Lord. Um, please, pull me another master tavern keeper. And I think then we can begin. So, we wish to hear about your grandfather's time with Marco Colombo, 
before he became the Prince of Trantia by his own hand. Um, where to begin? Well, when and where did your grandfather, Frederick Lewin, meet Marco Colombo? Yeah, yeah. Now, that is an interesting tale. But first, a little background to me and my grandpapa. The Lewin family hails from the city of Salzenmund in Nordland. The neighbouring province to your birthplace of Mittenland, I believe, Master Tavernkeeper. Aye, ah, yes indeed. I was born just outside of Karaburg, in the south of Middenland, though. At the opposite end of the western part of the empire, truth be told. Ah, the old seat of Drakwald, a veritable warren of winding streets and ancient buildings. Yeah, I visited the city a couple of times before I began working as a mercenary, following in my father's footsteps. But let's leave talk of that coffin of vellums for another day. We are here to discuss my grandpapa today. I was very close to my grandpapa, for he was the one that raised me whilst my father plied his trade around the peninsula of Tylea, making his fortune in the eastern part of the country, working for first one and then another and then another and then another of the city-states in their unending wars. My mother died when I was young, and I think my father could not bear to be reminded of her as he looked upon my visage. I take after her more than him. So, old Grandpapa Frederick took me under his wing, and I went to live with him in Sausenmund. Grandpapa would always tell me tales of his exploits as a young sailor upon the high seas. He had travelled far and wide, and had an anecdote for every occasion. Now. He had first met Marco Colombo in the city of Norden, overlooking the roaring Sea of Claws, in the Drossusbrühl Bay. It's on the northern coast of Nordland. You know it? Ah, yes. A slight roof dive of slums and villainy, if ever there was one. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. A lot of ships and crews specifically use this port city when heading to Lustria and the Southlands, and then they return here also to sell their ill-gotten goods straight into the black market there. As a result, you get sailors of many stripes there, but primarily from Norska, Kislev and the Empire. My grandpapa used to frequent the tavern, the Flotsam und Jetsam, whenever he was in the town there. When he was in between jobs, he would go there once a month to look for any seafaring work, catch up with local gossip, and play some games. He was a keen gambler, and loved nothing more than a game of Gwat Pai. That game is very popular there. Do you know it? Ah, yes. I do indeed. I used to play it with my old tutor. But please, tell the neophytes about it too. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's played with uh, oblong strips of bone upon which many oils have been bored, denoting numbers. A trader from Cassé brought the game to Nordland long ago, and it has been popular there ever since. I have a set if anyone fancies a game later. So, my grandpapa was playing one night with some very drunken Norsemen when in strode a young Tylean. He was wearing the most outlandish garb, all red leathers, knee-high boots, yellow silks, and a huge floppy hat decorated with plumes of feathers. My grandpapa had spent some time in the Republic of Lemas, and so hailed the stranger in his best Italian. A broad smile erupted on the newcomer's face, and he made for my grandpapa. It seemed that the stranger too was from Lemas, and the two quickly got into a jolly conversation, much to the consternation of the other players. My grandpapa took so long in taking his turn that one of the Norsemen 
flipped the table in anger and lunged at him with his dagger. But before he could plunge it into my grandpapa, the Thylean had drawn his blade and impaled the unruly man from the northern vests. The man blinked in disbelief as blood began to trickle from his lips before he dropped down dead as a doornail. My grandpapa acted quickly, hurling his throwing axe at the one Norseman furthest away from him, striking him dead and then slashing his sword through the neck of the other. With this, he grabbed all of the winnings that had fallen off the table in the ruckus and stumbled out of the door, with the Tylean covering his exit. The man's flintlock pistol aimed at anyone who looked as if they might try to follow the pair. The two quickly made their getaway, and my grandpapa soon found himself in the Tylean's lodgings. It was here that the two finally, formally, introduced themselves, and my grandpapa learned the name of the man who'd saved his life. It was your Marco Colombo. A merchant by trade, but also a scholar and a treasure hunter. The Tylean pulled out an expensive bottle of Estalian wine, and the two looked over the eclectic pile of items and money that my grandpapa had grabbed from the gambling table. He offered to split the winnings with the Marco, but the Tylean said he could keep it. But there was one thing that caught his eye, a map wrapped in lizard skin. My grandpapa gladly handed over the item, and then the two reminisced about Remus into the early hours before the Tylean had to return to his ship, as it was to leave at dawn. Oh, so they parted ways here. Yeah, yeah, and it was only by chance that they met again here in Tylea a few years later. In the interim, much had happened in the world. The city of Remus had been attacked by the Dark Elves in the infamous Battle of the Breach in 1487, and many people were taken off to become slaves including many members of Marco's family. They were never seen again. This added an additional incentive for the Tylean to head to the new world. Not that he needed much more encouragement. Marco had not been in Lemus at the time of the attack. He had become obsessed with the map that my grandpapa had given him and was devoting all of his time and energy to unlocking its secrets. The map showed the coastline of the continent of Lustria, but it also showed the sea lanes to get there, avoiding the elves of Ulthran on the way, and the Norse outposts of Skeggy, and the undead of the vampire coast when they arrived. In the center of the land to the far west on the map was a picture of several stepped pyramids, and und each was carved the Norse rune for treasure. My grandpapa was in Tylea at the time, working for the Kodoteri mercenary lord Prosper Colon as a shipwright. The attack on Nemes had angered all of Tylea, and in addition to funds being raised across the country so that the bridge could be restored to its former glory, many of the professional mercenary companies that had infested the country, were now turning their hands to training to fight on the seas as well as the land. The Battle of the Bridge clearly showed that there was a market opening for this kind of warfare. In 1491, Marco Colombo came to see Lord Colon to try and secure money for an expedition to Lustria. He had been asking all of the mercantile oligarchs in various cities to finance his expedition, but to no avail. Luckily for him, on the day he visited Prosper Cologne, my grandpapa was there advising the mercenary lord on the construction of the latest additions to his fleet. Marco and my grandpapa recognized each other immediately and greeted the other as old friends. 
My grandpapa then helped Marco convince Cologne of the economic viability of his idea. And although the interest rates for the loan were very steep, Colombo was able to secure enough money to hire three ships from the Condottoli and the crews to man them. This included my grandpapa too, as he was most insistent that he be allowed to go. Ah, right, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, that cider has gone right through me, and I must release the Kraken. I will be back very shortly. Ah, uh, yes, uh, of course. Well, you lot, I certainly hope you've been making notes. I now think it's best that we too take a short break, young neophytes. Stretch your legs. Feel free to grab some of the leftovers from today's carvery down in the kitchen, if you're hungry. And I put a couple of bottles of Bretonian wine on the bar, with enough glasses for you all, if you are thirsty. Just be sure to be back here in quarter of an hour. I'll keep the night entertained until your return. Chop chop, off you go. Ciao for now.